the defense attorney lied to me. He outright lied to me, but I didn't know it at the time. You want to know what this is about and why it was so important in this particular case as I was trying to settle and negotiate this case? Come join me for a walk around the lake as I share with you the answers to those questions. Hi, I'm Jerry Ojinski, a New York medical malpractice and personal injury attorney. Now, this is a medical malpractice case, and now this case had been ongoing for two and a half years. And as we were approaching the trial, we had a definite trial date. The defense attorney calls me up and says, hey, listen, we'd like to negotiate. We've evaluated the case, and we believe that we have some liability, but we don't believe we have full liability, but I'd like to start negotiating. And my response to that is, okay, what do you have to offer? Now, here's what's interesting. The defense attorney, instead of actually coming back with a real offer, now started making up an excuse and said, listen, I don't have authority right now. I don't have the ability to offer you a dime yet. I wanted to simply get from you a definite demand of what you and your client would take to settle this case. And then I'm going to go back to my principals to discuss the case, to evaluate whether or not your demand is actually appropriate. And my response to that was, I don't understand. You called me up to tell me that you evaluated the case, and now you believe that you have some liability here, but you don't have authority, number one, and you don't have an offer, but yet you want to negotiate? That's not how it works. And he said, I know how it works, but I just wanted to get a sense from you as to whether we could try and resolve this case. I said, here's what I recommend you do. I recommend you go back to your principals, go back to the insurance carrier, talk to your doctor, and get authority to go ahead and start negotiating. Then come back to me with a substantial offer and then we can start talking to see whether or not that's a reasonable offer. And if not, let's see where we can go, whether we're in the same ballpark or whether we are in totally different planetary systems and there's no way we're going to get close to each other, which means we're going to try this case. So the defense attorney calls me back a few days later and says, okay, I presented the case to the insurance carrier. They are now interested in trying to settle this case. We think that we have a decent defense and we think that if we go to trial, we will likely win this case and you will not. I said, okay, that's all well and good, but we're here for the purposes of negotiating. So we are done talking about liability or responsibility. We are now assuming that you have an obligation to repay my client for all the harms and losses and damages that he incurred because of your doctor's carelessness. So what do you have to offer? And now he comes in with a lowball settlement offer. And I said, I have to tell you something that I find to be very insulting. You knew that we were looking for substantially more money to try and settle this case. You told me that the insurance company also believed that this case should be settled and that our demand, the amount we were asking to settle this case, was fair and reasonable. And those are the key words, fair and reasonable here. We're not being greedy, although we certainly would prefer to do that. The reality is you now come in with a lowball settlement offer. I want you to do something for me, I said. I want you to tell me what your number is, how much authority you have been given. If you have instructions to try and save money, okay, I will talk to you about it. I will listen to what you have to say, and then I will determine whether or not your offer is appropriate. But to come in and now offer me little nickels, step by step, one after the other after the other, to try and reach a point that you think we might get to, I don't think that's the way to negotiate, at least not in good faith. And the attorney says, no, this is what I've been given. This is my authority. I said, if that's the only authority you've been given, then there's no point in having any further settlement discussion. I said, because honestly, what you told me is totally different than what you just presented me with. And based upon those inconsistencies, I no longer have trust in anything you have to say. So what just happened here? What just happened here is that we had initial interest to try and settle the case. There was trust between the attorneys initially, even though we had not worked with each other in the past. And now I believed what he had to say because I had no reason to distrust him or to mistrust him. But now when he comes back with a lowball settlement offer, and now he tells me this is the only authority he has, it is insulting, it is disgusting, it is not something that my client and I will entertain. And now there is a level of mistrust why? Because he strung me along. He led me to believe that this case could be settled. He led me to believe that the insurance carrier was reasonable, they were understanding, and they were willing to come up to a substantial offer based upon what he termed our reasonable demand. Now, 
what happened there. He didn't recognize why the settlement negotiations had broken down. And that's exactly what happened. Once settlement negotiations broke down, I knew right away that I could no longer have any further discussions with this attorney. So what did I do? I went to his supervisor. And now I began having honest discussions with a supervisor who was an experienced trial attorney. The other attorney I had been dealing with was a junior associate who really had no authority, he had no power, he had very little experience, and he certainly had not tried any cases. And that was one of the problems. He didn't have the knowledge, the seichel, the experience in order to go ahead and understand how important it is to communicate your words effectively, truthfully, honestly during the course of settlement discussions. Settlement discussions are much better with an attorney who comes to me and says, listen, I know what you're asking for. The insurance company does not have that amount, but they do have a substantial amount that they've given me authority to try and negotiate with. However, if he turns and says, listen, however, they've asked me to try and save a few dollars here. And my response will be an honest one saying, okay, tell me how much authority you have and tell me how much you need to save in order to settle this case. And now we can have an honest discussion about whether or not that's doable or not. So why do I share this quick information with you? I share it with you to open your eyes and help you understand how these types of cases work in the state of New York. You know, I realize you're watching this because you likely have questions or concerns about your own matter. Well, if your matter did happen in New York and you have not yet started a lawsuit, but are thinking of doing so and still have questions that need to be answered, what I invite you to do is pick up the phone and call me. You can reach me at 516 487-8207 or by email at jerry, G-E-R-R-Y at oginski-law.com. That's it for today's video. I'm Jerry Oginski. Have a wonderful day.